Hey everyone, uh, good to uh, good to be back with you. Uh, it's Parents in Sport Week, and uh, I'm pretty excited to be connecting up again with uh, Non Perfect Dad and the guys at the Magic Academy to uh, do some of their blockbuster stuff that they're doing. Um, I my angle on coming to this is uh, being a parent coach. Uh, I'm a dad coach um, and I work with lots of other coaches who are mum coaches and dad coaches and I think it's quite a challenge to be uh, a coach of your own children and I've often reflected uh, in the past at how I find it much easier to coach other people's children than my own um, but I wanted to share with you recent experience about uh, how the engagement and the process I've gone through with my son who's soon to become 13 and uh, just tell you a little bit of a story now by no means is this designed to be uh, me telling you that I've got it cracked because um, I don't think for a second that that's true however um, there's been some interesting journeys uh, in my son's sort of sporting life and I just wanted to reflect on that and share with you what those experiences have been. So uh, I, for those of you who know my work or know anything that I talk about within my podcast over on The Talent Equation, um, I'm a big believer that uh, we need to... Uh, enable young people to have far more autonomy and choice in to, in the decisions that they make around uh, their engagement in sport and physical activity. Uh, too much of it has become adultified and too much of it has become about where they're just sort of passive passengers almost, both virtually, uh, metaphorically and, uh, and um, physically, uh, literally just being sort of passported around through, from one sporting activity to the next and a very little agency and choice over that. And I've always had this, you know, g genuine belief that young people need, or should, or deserve, or have the right to way more uh, agency and way more control over what their lives are and what is involved in their lives. And so, I've always been at pains to uh, make sport and physical activity part of their life, but not necessarily getting hell bent on well definitely not getting hell bent on performance and um uh you know dr driving them to do anything that they don't necessarily want to do just wanted it to be enjoyable wanted to have a good time wanted them to make friends and benefit from the things that sport and physical activity bring uh, in particular i was very mindful of the fact that um and, you know, being a coach, somebody who works in sport and works in coaching and, you know, knows knows a little about uh, coaching and skill acquisition and supporting development and, you know, unlocking human potential, um, uh, that, you know, I, I was very mindful of the fact that, uh, you know, I did not want in any way to um, fall into the trap that many people can fall into, whereby... You know, you end up trying to vicariously live your life through your children's lives, and in so doing, you, um, you know, you can very quickly and easily lose connection with them. And um, <clears throat> and also, I was very mindful of the fact that you know I wanted them to just enjoy uh, everything that sport and physical activity could bring to them, and to have a lifelong uh, love of activity. And I certainly didn't want to get in the way of that by making it about. Uh, or making, if you like, them feel that my love for them was contingent on their sporting prowess or sporting capabilities. I purely and simply wanted them to have a really good time. Now, the only thing I would say, though, is I have been, throughout their childhood, um, I've always sort of had two two things that I always said I wanted, uh, I would, um, uh, you know, kind of, I, I not, not, not suppose expect, but just... I felt was important for them to hold central and very influenced by Carol Dweck's work around um, growth mindset. You know, all, all I've ever said to them is just do your best and try your hardest. And and if they do their best and they try their hardest, then I'll always, always, um, you know, I'll, ne I'll never uh, have any kind of 
issue with anything that they achieve or anything they they do or any mistakes they make or failures in actual fact we will celebrate the things that they don't get they don't get right and we will help them to find different ways of overcoming the challenge and overcoming the adversity now throughout this journey there's a niggling doubt in the back of the mind um, sometimes exacerbated by my wife who would sometimes challenge me and say things like you know, you, you know a lot about this. Surely you should be coaching him. And this is my son in this case. Surely you should be coaching him more. Surely you should be giving him more skills because, look, he's not as good as some of the other kids out there. And she'd be comparing with other kids who are, um, you know, more... have got more experiences or go to a school where they get a lot more training or have got a different kind of home setup or whatever it might be. Often she's comparing with kids with kids like kids with older brothers and sisters and we all know that that has a big impact on um, a, a young person's in, um, uh, development um, and he's the oldest so he doesn't have that he just has he just has me so um, and I've always pushed back on that and I've always said he's he's a child he just needs to enjoy his sport he needs to have no pressure on on, on it he needs to do do well. Try his hardest. Absolutely, you know. He needs to try his hardest. He needs to, and he needs to, um, uh, uh, you know, he needs to be committed and all those sorts of things. That's fine. But with this, isn't about you know me like teaching and coaching and training and all those sorts of things. That's not what this is about. And I'm not going to do that because it's not something that I just believe. And I, what I've always said, there will come a point. There will come a point where um, he will make that decision he will he will he will make or he will begin to explore what it might mean for him to take the next step in his sporting journey if he decides that's something he wants to do and that moment came quite recently um, whereby we've resisted the temptation to get involved in county we had a little dab dabble in the cricket one and Decided it wasn't for us. He's been doing lots of different sports as well. He was doing rugby, football, and cricket through the winter. No, sorry, rugby, rugby, football, and hockey through the winter. Cricket in the summer and tennis. But the winter's the really hard one. The winter, the winter was the one where he was struggling because he was doing lots of different activities. And it's fine. Look, you know, you can't commit to county when you're doing rugby, football, and cricket. So that's fine. It's all part of the recreational mix. And so. One of the things that it came to the point of this year was like, you know, things are starting to clash more now and things are starting to get in the way and fixtures are the same time and county training is going to be at a certain time. So we've got to start to make some decisions about what it is we want to do. And also at that point as well, I mean, I think it's an early point at which you might begin to specialise. However, it's just the nature of where we are. Um, and so we've opted out of that syst the systems so far, but now there's a point where then we may want to begin that entry point. And so I firstly was asking him to say, you know, is that what something you want to do? He said, yes. Well, I said, if that is something you do, you're probably now going to need to think about which of these activities are you going to do more than others. You don't have to drop them all together, but you're probably going to prioritise. And I said, and if you are going to choose one and you are going to pursue that in a bit more, uh, with a bit more vigour, then you might want to begin to think about, you know, taking some extra steps to put yourself on that journey of improvement and you're going to probably want to think about uh, how much time you spend in the activity rather than just the sort of one or a couple of hours a week you know maybe a session in the week and a game you might want to start to put some more active more time in and you might want to give a bit more focus um, and we had a conversation about and he said you know you know I just I just find like you know doing my own stuff like just boring I'd much rather be with other people and I'm saying cool of course but you can't always be with other people. There's going to be times when you're at home and you could use, I said, and so I, we just had a conversation and I just started to do essentially a bit of a goal setting exercise with him, but very, very sort of quietly and in the car while we were, as we were driving to and from places. I was just asking what, his goal, you know, asked him what his goal was. And his goal was, he said to me that, you know, his goal was to sort of play county and possibly see if he can explore to go on to, you know, the next level at regional, possibly even go into, into sort of national side. And I said, okay, well, what do you think people who do that or have that goal would do? Would they spend time, 
you know, on their own, working on things that they can work on and use, you know, and do, you know, what is it, 10 minutes a day, whatever, you know, an hour a day, whatever it is, to try and get better? Or would they think, I'll see what happens? And he said, well, I'd want to, I'd want to do that. And I said to him, okay, well, what are you going to do then? I said, what about, you know, and I said, do you think you can do an hour a day? No. Do you think you can do a couple of hours a week? Maybe, but I've got this and I've got that and I've got school and I've got this. I said, yeah, no, that's fair enough. I said, what about just doing like 10 or 15 minutes um, every other day? You know, just go in the garden, work on the work on some things. I'll come with you if you want me to, so that sort of stuff. And we'll just do some stuff. And he goes, yeah, I could probably do that. I could probably do that. Okay. And I said, okay, fine. Um and I said, recognize that if you don't do that, that you may have to reevaluate what, what your goal is. So you may have to think about, you're going to be up against kids who go to certain schools who have two or three days, two or three sessions a week, uh, you know, formally structured sessions, coached sessions. And I said, I'm happy to help with that. I'm happy to be part of that for you and to help you out. But it has to be you saying to me that you want to do it. You've got choices. You can either do that and make the commitment to that and follow through on that, or you can um, go on your Xbox or you know chat to your mates or do the things that you want to do. And and I said, so you know, you've got to understand that this is your reality. So he'd established himself a goal, which was actually a dream, because. We need to get some reality. And once we established what his reality was, it became clearer to him what was required of him in order to be able to take the steps. So then then after that, we just we just started to map out a couple of options. This is a classic thing called the GROW model. Um, and, um, and we started to map out the steps, uh, the options available to him, and then, and then a little bit of a way forward. And so I then said, do you want me? Is it, I said, is it hard for you to make the decision? And he said, yes, it's hard to remind myself that I want to do it because I've got so many of the things that I would also want to do and I sometimes can't find myself doing it. You know, it's a classic thing. We've all experienced cognitive dissonance. We've got a goal, but then other things get in the way. I have a goal to lose weight and then Kate comes along. You hold those two different competing ideals in your mind, right? So um, he said, yeah. And I said, okay, well, do you want me to help you with that? I said, He said, yes. I said, so do you want me to help? you to be accountable to the goals that you set for yourself he said yes that would help me so you want me to remind you of of that yes and even if it annoys you because you want to do something else he said yes I said okay so that's our plan so that's where we are um you know, hold, i have to hold myself accountable now as well because i get busy and i get other things on and i've got other things that i need to be doing and all those sorts of things and i have to try and place that as focus as well and i've been brilliant at it i'll be honest with you so following through is going to be the major challenge for us both um, but that's one of the things that we've agreed. And I wanted to share with you that little story because I just thought it was, a, it, hopefully it's useful to those of you who are out there who are parents who need to have conversations with the kids about what their goals are. I happen to be a coach who coaches my child, but at the same time, you know, I also have to make sure, well, part of my goal is, part of my role, sorry, not my goal, my role is to help him with the journeys on um, and try and help him to make decisions and part of that is for him saying that he wants me to be part of the decision-making process for him. So there you go. I just thought I'd share with you that little experience. And um, I am hope, hope there might be something in there. But that GROW model I would highly recommend. And it's called the GROW model. It's goal, reality, options, and way forward. Um, and it's always, always been really valuable to me in loads and loads of aspects of my life. Particularly when I start to, you know, really question, you know, where I'm going and what I'm doing. Anyway, um... Have a great Parents in Sport week. Hopefully that's useful and I will see you again soon.